Welcome to Be the CEO of Your Life, the podcast where we explore practical strategies and insights to help you lead, live fully, and stay present amidst life's many responsibilities. I am Olga, a mom, a clinical social worker, trans certified coach with over 17 years of experience. This podcast is designed specifically for driven executive working professional women, working moms, and anyone striving to find balance and maintain strong mental health. Whether you're navigating the challenges of professional growth, seeking to enhance your leadership skills, or simply trying to juggle the demands of work and family, this podcast is for you. Join me as we dive into subjects that matter most to you, from family, to mindful leadership, to work-life balance, to emotional resiliency and personal growth. I am so happy that you're here with me. Hello, my beautiful friends. Happy Friday. I am diving into a very short, powerful episode for you today. And that this was prompted to me by somebody I follow on LinkedIn. And his name, I'm sure you guys have heard of him, is Rob Dance, who uh, he CEOs a consulting company and basically helps uh, specifically tech entrepreneurs and anyways, he's, he's a big name in um, in England, but I would say probably all over. Anyways, he came up with these 50 ways to be super productive, ultimate cheat sheet. Uh, I love that. I love that. I'm like, this is a podcast episode because many of you working mom, working men, Working parents are looking at ways of being more productive. In our culture, we really value productivity to the point that we struggle slowing down, right? So on Monday, I gave you the subject of how to slow down. On Friday, I'm going to tell you how to be productive. Now, I'm going to share with you not all 50 ways, but you guys can go Google it and find it. Again, this is written by Rob Dance. This is not my work, although I do many of these things, and I'm curious to see how many of you do some of this. I am not going to go all all over the 50 because I've got 15 minutes with you and I want to make it powerful and cool. What you're going to notice is that being productive is not that far off from slowing down. (laughs) You might be shocked, okay? So plan and prioritize your day the night before. Raise your hand if you do this. I don't always, to be honest, but every morning I do plan my day. Sometimes it's very important for me to go over my calendar the night before. Normally I do this before going to bed. So mentally kind of visualize where I'm going tomorrow. And sometimes that makes me set my alarm earlier because that, like, if I notice that I'm back to back meetings, I might want to make at breakfast also my lunch and have it ready. So it is pretty easy. And sometimes that tells me like, I really have to go up, like go to the gym at 5 AM because it's never going to happen before I have to pick up my son. So there is something to be said about planning and prioritize your day the night before or the morning of. Second suggestion, do not multitask. What? How many of you, especially women, take great pride in saying, I'm a multitasker? Well, guess what? Multitasking is the complete like enemy of being productive. When you're multitasking, you are diverting the brain's capacity in a million tabs, like kind of like on your desktop. And you can't fully give attention to any single one of them fully. So you end up making more mistakes. You end up forgetting details. You end up getting feedback that makes you feel terrible because they're like, you lacked attention here. You made a mistake. Do not multitask. I repeat, that is not a superpower. That actually works against your productivity. You end up having to do things twice often. Find out your productive hours. Oh my God, I've got a client who I love. Very much so. And she hears me talk about my morning routine and she's like, man, I wish it was a morning person. Listen, if you know this about yourself, awesome. Do not try and book things for yourself when you're not in your most productive hours. 
I happen to be super sharp mentally, physically, attentively morning to like 2 p.m. Past that time, my brain starts like rebelling against structure. 7 p.m. hits, there is no way I can do anything intellectual. My husband is the complete opposite. So we actually, we do things in reverse and that's okay, right? It's understanding when are you most productive and packing up the, the work that needs most of your attention, most of your energy during those productive hours, which are personal to you. And you don't have to be like anybody else, like my client was trying to make it to the 5 p.m. club. And I'm like, it's not for you, man. Just give up. You are in another club. Use it. Reward yourself for finishing big tasks. I say this, I think, every single day to all my coaching clients who are so used to working really hard, being hard on themselves, and rarely do they ever reward themselves when they have accomplished something big. Take the time. Even if it is to just say, whoa, I'm proud. I heard a client of mine say that this morning, and oh my God, her entire energy was vibrating. And she said, I am so proud of how I'm handling this. So just reward yourself. It could be just a simple acknowledging, but sometimes... I have set a, re a reward that is something that I really want. And although I can buy it now, I wait until that task is done so that it really feels rewarding. Another one is limit your phone notifications. I talked about this on Monday. Now that I'm not, I don't have social media on my phone, my phone has zero notifications. Well, if you don't want to say goodbye to social media on your phone and be, do you think that that's too extremist for yourself? Get rid of the notifications. What's going to happen if you don't get an update on your Instagram every 20 minutes? I tell you what's going to happen. All of what you miss is going to be there whenever you choose to have mindful social media activity. And also, you're not going to be distracted. Our human focus attention has diminished by a lot because of our interaction with short videos and Instagram and YouTube and all of what we're watching. So it is our job to increment our attention span. Okay. Get rid of those notifications. Schedule family time and adventures. Do it. Have something to look forward to. Like I am planning a camping trip with my family and that is such an exciting part for us because our son loved it so much. Having little moments like that schedule, or we're going to go out for supper this one day, or this is what we're doing for somebody's birthday. Having those moments scheduled, one, ensures that it's in the calendar. Everybody knows, and you, you make it happen. But also, it gives you something to look forward to. Have a simple morning routine, but, but have one. What are three things, one thing that you want to do every morning? It might be that you get up every morning to just pray or meditate or breathe or shower. I don't know. What are your simple morning routines? But do have one. Just prioritize that. Part of my morning routine is carefully picking my cup of coffee for the day. And it goes with what I'm wearing, with how I'm feeling, with what I'm doing that day, my intention. And I select my cup of coffee. Also, do your hardest dreaded tasks first. There's a phenomenal book called Eat That Frog, I think. I might be totally changing the name, but it's got the word frog and eat in it. And one of the things that I took away from that book, it's all about being productive, is to not only prioritize, but from the things that you have to do, the three things that you absolutely have to do on each day. And the three things come from my own belief that three things on your to-do list is better that Amelia, which of these three things you are dreading, you do not want to do, do that one first. Start with that one because it's going to take the most amount of energy. And once that's out, you're going to feel like you are flying, okay? Learn to quit to win. What? Yes, winning is not so important. I was telling a friend of mine the other day at my son's softball practice we were talking about injuries and I was telling her that I've, I'm, 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 I'm nursing a Achilles injury and it's been one, it's going to come to one year. And she said, oh my God, what happened? Well, I chose to win. What did I choose to win? I, w I went to a bachelor party wearing high heels and I wanted to prove to myself and everybody else that I wasn't so, so much older than the group, although I was. 
And I said to myself, I'm going to not only go and enjoy, I'm going to stay there at, as late as they are. And yes, I'm going to wear the high heels that everybody's wearing. Well, joke on me, because that has, because I never wear, wear high heels, not until three in the morning. I injured my Achilles. It's insane, but I did just by wearing those shoes. It's been a year and I haven't been able to, I haven't, I wasn't able to race in May. There is a race that I do every year in May. I couldn't do it. I haven't been able to run and I, in fact, can hardly jump. And it's cost me, I don't know how many hours in physio and in chiro care and in like really modifying. All because I chose to win. Now, I'm sure you have experiences like this where you just want to win. You're listening to win an argument, not to understand. You're pushing yourself to win, proving something. And in the end, if you do win, it's not <laughs> to your advantage. So learn to quit to win. Instead, choose to accept, to be happy, to be you, to embrace that moment of who you are. Cut down on TV, social media for personal uses, use, and any distractions that take you away from being in the present and really engage in your moment. Okay. That is, we, we talked about it on Monday. Take notes of everything. Really unload everything that is in your brain, put it on a notebook so that ah, your mind can rest. Take notes of everything. Everything that you're thinking that it feels overwhelming, put it on pen and paper. It just will make a massive difference. I, again, talked about that on Monday. It's funny. I think like Rob, I guess. Remove distractions and protect your flow. When I say I'm going to record a podcast, I put my phone on silence. I close all the tabs in my computer. This is all I'm doing. I need no distractions. I don't want any notifications. I don't want any sounds. I close my door. This is a protected hour for me to be in my flow. When I say I'm coaching, the same goes on. I'm just in coaching mode. And so I don't have to think about what email I'm going to write. I don't have to think about what podcast I'm going to write. I am in one task and that is coaching. I am doing what I'm doing in this moment and there is nothing else. Have productivity hours where you're protecting your flow or you're letting your brain do one activity only. Stop scheduling things like this. Meeting with my team, writing a report, going out to socialize with my team, where your brain has to go from focus to socializing, focus to giving, focus to talking. Protect your flow by saying, Tuesday is when I'm going to do all my admin. So it's me and myself, and I'm going to put earphones on. I'm going to block my notifications, no emails, nothing. I'm going to get this done. Oh, on Tuesday, this week seems like I have a lot of meetings. What day can I just group them? So my brain is in meeting mode. As much as possible, attempt to protect your flow so that you can be as productive as possible. We do learn brain, we do lose brain power when we're trying to jump from one type of task to the next within the same, you know, chunk of morning or afternoon. Create a nightly ritual to unwind. For me, at the moment, is doing my, my skincare routine, washing my face, flossing my teeth, putting all my creams all over, grabbing a book, going to my bed to just read a few pages, and then maybe maybe connect to my husband if he's home. That is the highlight of my nightly ritual to unwind. My brain knows where we're going. Oh, the, the, the lights are coming off. She's in the, in the bathroom cleaning her face. Like my brain starts already anticipating we're unwinding. What does that look like for you? My phone sets an alarm that says start getting ready for bed at 7.30. It is when I put my son to sleep and that's like a cue for me. And interestingly enough, now I notice I begin to get sleepy at that time. It's like my, my body is ad adapting to the schedule. I put it in. Stop thinking about the things you cannot control. God, can we come back to this lesson time after time after time? It does not make you productive to sit here and think of everything that can, can go wrong. I know your brain wants you to do that because it feels like 
only by doing so can you actually be ready and be really productive if you know things go really bad but what is actually doing is stealing your presence your awareness your thinking power from this moment and so in this moment you're not productive because you're planning for a future scenario that might never happen it, like i mean if we want to describe lack of productivity that should be the definition <laughs> Planning for something, using all of your time and attention and energy and emotional well-being to plan for something that might never happen. What? Okay, last but not least, let me choose one more. Learn, copy the best people. Mm, Identify the best people that are doing something that you want to master. Whether that is being incredibly patient or productive or a good writer, whatever it is that you're working towards being good at, or better at, who are the best doing that? And how can you learn from them? And don't get stuck on, oh, but I don't know this person. How could I learn from them? You can study people by looking at their their books, uh, their resumes, even like, what are they spending time on? Reading their books. If, if there are people that, you know, you don't know about, you don't know personally, but you could kind of study, study them. Learn from the best people that there is accessibility to you to learn from. All right. I hope this was helpful to you. What a great way to end the week thinking about productivity. And ideally, I didn't give you anything in here that feels like, yes, I've heard it before. I have to do a to-do list. I have to go and do it. And no, this is about you finding strategies that work for you that actually do include taking steps to slow down, to plan, to think, to reframe, and to really stop distractions. That's essentially, you know, what um, productivity is all about, is noticing where our leaks are, our distractions are, are, and having a plan to not fall for them. I hope this was helpful. If you did like this episode, please share it with somebody else. Shout out to Rob Dance for creating this. I am sure he's very productive himself and he's learned from, from some of these strategies. I definitely can vouch for many of them as I already have implemented them. And I hope that this, if anything, just inspire you to go out there and practice being productive from a different perspective. Talk to you guys on Monday. Bye now. Thank you.